On the road, yeah, back again, and that's frustrating. It's like smear on me windscreen. Anyway, today we're off to the Hive Stadium, home of Barnet FC, who currently sit second from bottom in League Two. It's the final day of the season. They need to win. They have to win if they have any chance of staying in this division. But it's not that simple. They're going to need to rely on Morecambe losing to Coventry, who sit just above them. Now, Coventry already in a playoff position, and at home too, you'd like to think they could sign off the league season with a win. But hey, anything can happen, and we're on our way. And what is an absolutely beautiful day? Look at that sky, not a cloud, as we take the exit for the M25. I'm now on the M25. Now I'm in a tunnel where there's light at the end of it but this ain't good four lanes into one we got traffic make that standstill traffic gridlock traffic whatever you want to call it we're in traffic it was due to arrive bang on half past we've lost 26 minutes but hey do not worry we're still gonna make kickoff well maybe not if we continue at standstill all right well maybe we'll miss about 10 minutes or if we just sit here we could bump it up to about 20 minutes yeah that's right we're gonna miss a lot of this game we're moving and here's what was holding things up nice one mate so the race is on how many minutes can we shave off at this time well first of all i'm gonna take the exit for the a1 actually get on the a1 then find myself down a road with plenty of greenery if i arrive arriving where's that l street and boring wood i know it well i don't know where I, I don't know where i'm going i'm relying on satius navius and as you can see we've shaved off a huge amount of time we're gonna make kickoff well maybe not traffic's building again and now we've got to somehow go right Right, how are we going to do this? We've been given a lifeline. Man in car has given us the look to say that, you know what, mate, you can go. However, I've got issues. I can't get out because the traffic continues to flow on my side. Despite this, though, Man in car really wants me to go ahead of him. Leading me to A. He likes my car. It's also a Volvo. B. He really finds me attractive. C. He's not in any rush. Or D. A combination of all three. Now, thanks to Man in car behind us, we did get going, and we are about to turn right into the Hive Stadium, home of Barnet FC. Here we go. Here we go. Your parker down there is full, sir. Damn it, Graham. I need a space. But we have got space to the service road, just to a quick right here. My got, got colleague there. If you just give him six pounds, he'll park you up. Okay, Graham. Six pounds to park, you say? Well, got no other choice. Let's speak to Michael down here. It doesn't look like Michael wants to take my money. He's signaling me down the road. What do I do? Main car park. Main car park, Michael. I don't know where that is. Where is it? Straight down there on your left. Okay, straight down there on my left. I'm quite confused if I'm being honest. Graham on the gate said there's no parking, but Michael will sort me out if I give him six quid. Michael didn't want six quid. Now he sent me down to the main car park, straight down there on the left. All right, we've got problems. Keith's telling me to stop, but he's actually lifting that barrier. Oh, rude. Police have decided to cut in front of me as if they're above the law or something. I mean, let's be honest. Who do they think they are? Anyway, Keith, where am I going? Left, he says. Very strong signals from Keith there. I don't think he's ever been more sure about where I should be parking. That's all right, Terry. You just walk in front of the car. As I stopped, I might as well let Bill pass. No worries, mate. You enjoy the game. We've approached the barrier. It opens. We're still not giving any money for this. Here we go into this space, pulling just behind the Bentley and Hal van. I'd just like to let you know that you've been watching a car dash cam for the last two minutes and 20. Where are we in Russia? Finally, a different perspective. My feet. But I can confirm we're not in Russia. I can also confirm that I have to pay for parking in the club shop. I'm off to the club shop, and now I'm in the club shop, about to pay for parking. Yeah, six, six pounds. Pound. Story checks out. Six pound for parking. And in exchange for my six pound that Graham said Michael would take, but Michael didn't take, sent me down to the car park, which Keith signaled me into. Found the sign that told me I got paid in the club shop. I got given a token. I'll need this later. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. We have made it for kickoff. Actually, maybe not. Cues. This guy in front showing his true colours. More on that in a minute, but it's a slow queue. The search queue is holding things up, which means, yeah, we've missed kickoff. But as always, we eventually get through. As we approach a gate, it looks like we're going to be in another queue as a train passes by. I'm now in the queue, and I'm just checking the ticket that I printed off in black, not black and white fast draft. I'm gutted about that. What was I saying? Yeah, I was just checking I was in the right place. Another train passes. Now Charlotte on the gate is helping people scan their tickets. I mean, I think we've missed 10 minutes of this game. And then she Charlotte scans my ticket for me because I'm incapable of doing it myself. And now my friends is £23 spent on this League 2 relegation battle. <sighs> football. I mean, football! And so we make our way in. And according to the scoreboard, it's just eight minutes we've missed, and I can confirm that Justice Jews is not a thing at the hive. <laughs> That was me going up to Roku, and here's the view from Roku. Now, we normally get the facts before kickoff. Should we get them now? Let's get them now. Name, Barnet FC. Founded way before you, mate. Home ground, we're here. It's the Hive, which has a capacity of 6,205, of which 5,334 are seated. Nickname, the Bees. Anything else? Well, it is often forgotten about that there are three teams in North London. Of course, you've got the North London derby between Arsenal and Tottenham, but what about Barnet? Well, of course, there are a lot of outright Barnet fans, but you will sometimes find Arsenal and Tottenham fans both go to support Barnet on away days. All right, let's have a look around. Over there, you've got the East Stand with a little digital scoreboard. Have a digital scoreboard. Down the end, you've got the South Terriers there. Over here, you've got the biggest stand is the West Stand with a digital scoreboard and the nearest block to us here is actually housing the Chesterfield fans for today. Did I mention Chesterfield at the start of the video? I don't think I did. Anyway, they're playing Chesterfield and unfortunately already relegated. Early signs suggest there's no Dr. Pepper here. We'll confirm at half time. And with the beautiful weather today, full kit Gareth is living up to his name. As you can see, Derek down the front's got a big one and multitasking too as he sends those snaps straight to his laptop. Meanwhile, we've got an envious Chris who looks on and can only dream of having something the size of Derek's. And I didn't think it was possible, but even Lucy's got a bigger one. Let's just have a moment for Chris. Let's move on. Chesterfield to sailing. <laughs> Very nice. Not much action on the pitch, though. Actually, tell a lie. There was this. No! And then there was this. No! And then the goal. Or not. No! Ladies and gentlemen, the human ruler. As always, standard Instagram shot. There we go. Follow me up. Links in the description. Did someone say crossbar? Finish. 
So I mentioned at the beginning that Justice Destroyers was not a thing. It may be a thing. Look at these two getting an eyeful. They're loving it. I've come to the conclusion that it's pretty tame down here. Maybe they're not stewards. Maybe they're more concierge answering any questions that new and existing fans have. Janet, enjoy the game. Oh, hang on. It's all just got serious again. George is on the prowl. But to be honest, I ain't taking him seriously unless he tucks his shirt in. So off goes George to act on something pointless. Meanwhile, as halftime looms, fans leave their seats to grab some food and drink. As a paying football fan, we all had three faults when going to get food and drink. The first fault is what if I miss a goal? The second is, well, it won't happen today. <laughs> Third fault is one of two. Quite simply, wow, I'm glad I didn't get up and get food and drink. The second news, why did I get up and get food and drink? That's Barnet one, Chesterfield nil. Just a quick glance at the phone, Morecambe drawing nil nil with Coventry, keeping them just out of the relegation zone. Barnet doing all they can so far. <laughs> Belief. Belief. That's half time. Should we go get some food and drink? Yeah, let's crack on. Eventually, I did make it down, and yep, I'm queuing. I'm becoming an expert in this. Now, it's fine. It doesn't matter where I stand in the queue. I'm always that guy that people want to walk in between. Sorry, mate. Excuse me, mate. As you can see here, I even closed the gap. But no, of course. Oh, Short sure, Shields sure here wants to get through. I'm telling you, if this behavior carries on, I'm just going to have to call George. Shirt tucked in or not. Anyway, I'm going to stick with a trusty old cheeseburger. £4.50. A little bit steep, though. Drinks are confirmed as well. I'm just going to get a water. As you can see, I've quite clearly got a Sprite. What happened there? Well, they ran out of water. Poor me. I've had to spend 50p more for something more unhealthy. Lose, lose. And so there you have it. A Sprite and a wrapped up sweaty burger. And a six pounds spent on food and drink. And so it's back up to row Q. Here we go. It might be worth pointing out that I was in that queue for so long that I missed some of the second half as well. Who cares? I'm hungry and I'm about to, well, I'm, I'm about to eat a sweaty burger. Must admit, little care has gone into this. There was no onions either. They run out of them as well as water. It's sweaty on top, burnt on the bottom. Looks like Joel just deployed the heavies. These guys ain't going to take any crap. They don't even like football, so not even enticed by the game. They're here to deal with the fans that are most likely to get out of hand. And that rifle kick Gareth. He's on his phone there checking the other scores. In fact, most people are. But these ain't. These are trying to work out where they took the wrong turn. We're an hour in now. Not much has happened in this second half, apart from the constant trains. And understandably, the nerves are kicking in. Everyone's waiting for a Coventry goal. That's not coming. So as it stands, the two teams playing on that field right now are leaving the football league. I'm not joking. Every few minutes, a train. But it can't be sitting on a one goal lead though, as it can easily go wrong for them this end. Good thing is they are trying to get the second. <laughs> Just as I say that, Chesterfield are looking for the equaliser. <laughs> Here's all the comments from my Instagram post asking me to put them in the video. There you go. And surprise, surprise, there's another train. After a whole lot of nothing, here's another chance for Barnet. <laughs> Two nil, nine minutes plus stoppage time. But unfortunately for Barnet, it doesn't change the league table. What it does do is almost secure this win here. They've done everything they needed to do, but relying on other games is not where you want to be. <laughs> it's literally roles reversed. This lot are losing and are having a great time. This lot, meanwhile, are winning. They're not having such a great time. And that is because the current score at Rico Arena is Coventry nil, Malcolm nil, which, as I've said, is enough to keep Malcolm up. Battery change, Barnet goal. <laughs> If you want to check that goal out, it's probably the best one of the lot in to Barnett's YouTube channel. It's Barnett 3, Chesterfield 0. And even though the goals keep coming in, you cannot put a smile on these fans' faces. This game's done. They've done what they had to do. Commentary, Malcolm, anything, nothing. Nothing at all. Very strange second half, and to be expected as well. The atmosphere dictated by a game that was 90 miles away with no goals in it. The final whistle isn't too far away, and the Chesterfield fans look like they're playing for a pitch invasion. I'm sure if Coventry can get a last minute winner, we'll see the same from Barnet. <laughs> And there you have it. That was the final whistle and whatever pitch invasion was planned. Well, the old Bill and Stewards have made sure that's not going to happen. As the Barnet players head for the tunnel, the score is in. It ends 0-0 at the Rico Arena, which confirms Barnet are playing National League football next season. Sad times. And of course, joining them will be Chesterfield. It's not been their season either. Hopefully, I can make it back up to the Football League soon. I'm sorry, Gareth. Today just wasn't your day. It was almost the great escape, but it's goal difference that's put you down. 46 points from 46 games. One more point, and you wouldn't be walking out of here like that. It would be so much different. Unlucky. Despite the confirmed relegation, plenty have stayed behind to show their appreciation for the players and the staff for this season. And while they do that, should we rate today's experience? Let's. So, atmosphere. Understandably, it wasn't the best, was it? Just because everyone's eyes were on another game. Just to feel we're happy, though. They've obviously come to terms with their relegation. This is still fresh for Barnet. I'm going to go with two stars for this one. Moving on to facilities. They've been here five years. It still looks like a relatively new ground. Training facilities surrounding it, too. It's a great setup for a lower league club and expandable as well. I'm going to go with three and a half stars. You know how important food and drink is for me. It's time for that. And it wasn't looking promising. Asked for a water, got a Sprite. Asked for a cheeseburger with onions, got no onions. And then, well, you saw the burger. But how did it taste? 
place. Well, I've got to give him credit. It wasn't actually that bad. All things considering, it's a three-star burger. No Dr. Pepper, no water. You're going to lay my food and drink rating straight down the middle. It's two and a half stars. Finally, we're talking cost. Was it value for money? Well, I spent 35 quid at a League Two game. Didn't even get a program either. It was six pound on the parking, 23 on the ticket, and then six pound on the food and drink, which I felt was a little bit expensive. I mean, as I say, it was a nice ground. The food was all right. It lacked atmosphere, but we know why. We're going to go right down the middle again. Two and a half stars. It was, it was okay. All right, so we're out of here. Parking token in hand. With one last look at the hive into the car we get, and it's more queues that greet us on the way out. I'm not going to lie, it took me quite a long time to get out of this place, but we did eventually get out. I need to find myself in more queues on the M25. Typical way. Well, now, my friends, brings us to the end of another on the road. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and be sure to check out all the other on the roads in the playlist below. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.